Do you want to learn Go with clear and straightforward examples and see all its capabilities? Then I will show you how. My name is Marcos. Let's learn some Go. So here we are on the website that is providing the material for us to learn Go in a very easy way using examples extremely straightforward. Um, so this website, as you can see, it's a uh, very simple in terms of design, typically speaking, like, um, you know, programming languages website, they tend to be simple and straightforward. That's what I love about that design. So here on this website, you can see um, there is a quick explanation about Golang. And this website is meant to be a hands on introduction using Go with annotated example programs and check out the first example uh, and browse the full list. Um, before we browse the full list, let's just, let's just take a look on how awesome this is. So we're going to click here on the hello world and, um, the, the, the website will follow this template. The structure is very simple on the left side. It, uh, it describes, uh, it explains everything, that, um, that is proposing on the right side, which is the code. So left side is the description. The right side is the code. Um, so on the top, the typically on the very top portion of the website, it shows the actual code. And then below on this little other gray box here, it shows the output and, uh, different ways of doing the code. Um, so let, let's take step by step first, right? Um, so, so here, let's take a look on, on here on the, um, on the description. So our first program will be the classic, obviously it's law. We got to do hello words, any language we do. So the classic hello world message and the, the full source code for do hello words in Golang only requires five line of lines of code. So the, fir the very first line is um, for every application in Go, you got to specify a package. A package is essentially uh, the way on how you distribute your Go Golang application. Um, and all your source code belongs to a package and package make makes, um, you know, Golang reusable. And um, speaking of package, you see here on the second line, there is an import. So we are importing an external package. In this case, here is a package called FMT, which stands for format. Uh, this package is, um, you know, extremely well used in Golang. Um, is in this particular example here, um, it provides us the capability to do a print into, uh, into our console. And the print is hello world. Uh, so just quick, quickly here on the structure, uh, you see here, um, we declare a function, the function, uh, the function name is called main on a name, uh, on the function name, there's, uh, there's also no parameter. And then we see here, a curly brackets, FMT dot, which is a ref referring to the package that we just imported a method that is available within that package. And what's the message we are, uh, you wanted to display. So this is just the code, right? Like how this is actually executed. So um, go by example website continues on explaining things here to us. So you can run a the program um, just by putting the code um, the code in a file. So in this file is a hello words.go. Um, and then what you do is you call the go command line go space run. Uh, you specify the file name. And eventually it will, it will provide you the output. The output on this website is uh, show as uh, gray. Um, so you can see here that after you execute, it, it outputs hello world. Obviously, sometimes we, uh, most of the times, um, we actually compile the code in order to, um, you know, may, uh, deploy our code uh, to our desired uh, place. In this case here, um, in order to compile code in Go, is actually quite simple. So what you do is a Go space build, and you specify in this case, which, which is a simple case, you specify what's the actual the file name, and that's pretty much it. Once you do it, we'll create a, in this case, a hello dash word with no extension, but this is actually the file being executed, um, um, which is available in this particular folder. So what you do in order to execute that uh, uh, through a command line, you do a dot forward slash. Uh, this is a Mac uh, for Windows, I think is backslash. Uh, we're going to take a look in a second. And then you execute the file in a hello world. And we can execute that in binary, binary directly. Uh, 
very simple and straightforward. Uh, there is a few other capabilities here on this website. So here on the top right corner, we have a copy to clipboards or copy code. So you can copy and uh, play around. Uh, and the other nice thing is there is a link called run code. So when you click on this link, it goes to the official Golang website playground, uh, which copy paste the code that we just saw. Um, and there is this nice UI. Um, it shows here Golang version, uh, which it currently is it, the latest version is 1.18. It was released uh, March 2022. Um, so you click here, run. And at the very bottom side, you see the output, hello world. Very simple, straightforward. Um, at the bottom here, uh, as you were, may remember, uh, let's just go back here on the website, it shows multiple examples, right? So the very first example is the classic hello world. And then the next proposed uh, topic to learn Go with examples is uh, having values and eventually variables and constant. Um, as you can see here, those are basic principles for you know the majority of programming languages. Uh, and as you go down, we are increasing the level of difficulty or showing more specific uh, language capabilities. Uh, and there is a lot of examples here. So that's the nice thing about this website. So let's just go. Um, so the next, the next one is called values, right? So if we go back here to the page, um, there is a link here at the bottom called next example. So you can just click. The other way to do it is uh, you can actually use the arrow keys on your keyboard. So if you type, if you press the right arrow key on, you know, when you have the focus on this web page, you go to the next example. Um, so when I initially learned Go, um, I actually used this website like 90% of the times. So I had um, multiple tabs open with those examples here, and it was extremely helpful um, because, you know, it's a quick way to do a syntax check and read uh, what's happening, etc. And that's perfect. But my proposal for you today is um, I want to go one step further. Uh, the one step further is actually execute this code uh, through visual code directly. And we're going to go there in a second. But just before doing that, let's just go back here to the website. Uh, I want to give the credits uh, to the creators of this website, uh, go by example. So if you ho if you scroll all the way down here, there are those two individuals here that, you know, took their uh, their time to provide us, you know, great content. So Mark and Eli. Please make sure to um, you know click, uh, see the con uh, take a look on their blog, see the contents that they provide. Uh, it's really awesome. So when you click here on source, um, you're gonna be redirected to um, the GitHub repository that I, that is rep represented. Um, that is the, the actual code uh, for the website. So it's so here, like, you know, how to execute and et cetera. What we are looking for here in, in, to be more precise is this folder right here called examples. So when you click here on this folder, uh, which I will just um, in a second here, put into the other screen. Um, so for example, um, on the left side, we have hello world. On the, on the right side, we have many, many examples here. So what we can do is we can just search Hello world, it's on alphabetical order, so it's just easy to find. You click here on the hello world folder, there will be a few files. Um, our focus right now is the actual Go file, so you click here, you can actually see the code. Very simple, straightforward. Um, so my proposal is, as I said, we're going to take a look, um, we're going to clone this, rep this repository, and after cloning this repository, we're going to run everything on local. So yeah, let's take a look. Okay, so let's start by taking a look on the actual code. I just cloned the repository here, um, and I'm ready to take a look on the code and do some execution, troubleshooting, debugging, and everything. But before we proceed, I just want to tell you some prerequisites for you to move forward. So um, uh, needless to say, you have need, you need to have Golang installed. So go installed on your machine. I'm also going to be using Visual Code for those examples. I believe it's like one of the most well-used um, IDEs out there. It's open source. You can download. It's very easy to use. Um, so 
for for the low, for downloading Go and installing Go, just go to the Go website or the official website, which I will show you the link. Um, uh, it would. It will be on the on the, the description of this video. So you can click here on download. It will redirect you to uh, multiple platforms. So if you're using Mac, Windows, or Linux, uh, you can download the packages accordingly. After you download, you download the install, um, it will is actually follow a very straightforward installation process as well. So like you know, typical wizard next next finish. Um, and once you do this, a way, a way to test is open your uh, terminal. And you type go space version. So when you do this, it will show you the version. Um, so right now, the version uh, which was released back in March this year, 2022, is 1.18. Um, so if you if you have this output, you will have a successful installation. Um, you, you will notice that I have a specific setup here on my Viso code. I will actually provide the descriptions below on how to have those looks. Uh, but another pre quick prerequisite here is the extension. Uh, the extension that uh, it is important for us is just the Go extension. Uh, nothing else is actually necessary for us to execute. Um, and the other um, the other thing that you might notice is that my terminal, it looks slightly different design-wise. Um, there is a, a package to uh, modify your terminal you, uh, design and template. Uh, it's called All My Posh for Windows. Uh, for Mac, there is an equivalent called All My Zash. Um, I, will, I will provide the link below so you can have this right here. Um, but yeah. Let's take a look here just quickly on on the on the folder structure after I clone the repository. So just gonna um, take a look here. So on the left side, um, we take uh, there is examples, right? So each folder represents one quick example that it can also be found on the website. Um, and all the other things here is mostly related to their website itself. Uh, so as I said, uh, we are mostly want to focus on the examples. So let's start with hello world. Uh, so we're going to look here. So there is a hello world. Uh, we can click here on the hello world.go and um, the code is exactly the same. So let's just try to execute the same way that they executed on the website. So we're going to go here, um, display all the contents. Uh, there is a folder called example. So we go there, we go inside uh, the folder called hello world as well. And once we do this, the very first one that we want, we need to do is go run. So go space run hello world uh, dash go. Uh, when you click here, you execute um, the, the program directly without building or compiling as an application. There is only one output here on your console, which is hello world. The second thing that they did as an example was a go space build and then hello world dot go. Once you do this, we'll compile the application into an executable. I am on Windows. Um, so by default, um, it, it will append a uh, extension file, uh, exe, so for you to execute. And if you want to execute it, uh, just do a hello world um, uh, like that syntax. You push enter and here you go. Um, so my proposal will be, uh, we, we're going to walk through all the examples. All the examples will be awesome. Uh, there are some examples that are fairly complicated. So what we're going to do is I'm going to explain in detail what it is. And the beauty is we'll be able to debug on visual code and see step by step on how the code is actually behaving. Um, you can learn everything just by looking to their website. You don't necessarily need a, a visual code installed and clone the repository. Like theoretically speaking, you could just open the website and like learn things there. I learned that way initially. Initially, I had multiple tabs, um, you know, for for the for their website, and I was just walking through the examples and just by reading it, it was um, easy to understand. What happens with programming though is. Um, at least with me and uh, with a lot of my peers uh, throughout the years um, of experience that I have is um, it's easier to absorb knowledge when you're actually typing it, when you're actually doing some changes and debugging and etc. Just reading it, it makes sense at first glance, but it might not stick to the memory for a long term. So that's my personal preference. Uh, please, you know, um, 
take a look on the, the examples on our website um, in, in a very quick way. Uh, but the, for the proposal for this video, uh, we're going to take a look on our examples um, through Visual Code. So we're going to take a look now on the Go values. The Go values, uh, the values example is just the next example. So right here, so when you click values.go, this is the next example that we have. Here we go. That's a little bit easier to see. So let's take a look. Uh, once again, uh, we start having package.main. We import the formatter package. Uh, actually, there is a, a nice tooltip. Here we go. We are already taking a good benefit on having this proviso code instead of just the website, you can take a look here, the FMT implements formatted IO with functions analogous with the print F and scan F on C. For those that learn C, uh, the, the format verbs are der uh, der uh, derived from C, but much simpler. And it also shows like how, how you can actually use with, uh, you know, some other type of formatting, but we cannot take, we will take a look at that afterwards. So for the example that we have here, values is just providing you in a very high level, how can you actually use strings, um, some concatenation and integers and some basic Boolean parameters. Let's, 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 uh, um, let's just ex execute the code first. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to the folder called values. And after I am on the folder values, let me just expand here a little bit. And let's just see here the contents of that folder. So we have just a the go uh, values and there are some other uh, files that, you know, not necessarily relevant for this example. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a go run values.go just by default. Just take a look on uh, what's going to be the output. So Going step by step, format, printing line, go plus sign length. So we are concatenating two strings together. And because there is no space in here, we expect the outputs to be just go lang. By the way, I keep saying go lang, but um, the actual name is just go. It just stuck to my mind. So integers and floats. So we have integers and floats here. Even though we are not declaring variables, uh, the Golang uh, compiler is interpreting this as integers because you have the complete full values. So one plus one, and we have a string here and we do a comma separated value. So it concatenate at the end and then it prints the output. The output right here is two. Just continue. Now we have floats. So 7.0, just to specify as a float, you're, you're specifying the decimal value. So divided by three, and then we have the output right here below, which is 2.3 to infinity. And just uh, keep going. We have some Boolean operations here, and those operators, um, as you would expect, yes, very similar to, you know, any other language and like I just how Booleans generally work. So if you have a true and a false, you the output should be false, a true or false, then the output is true and a not true is false. I think the most important here, the most important aspect is not necessarily the logical thing, but like the go length syntax instead. So as you can see, we do have the and operation operator with two double uh, E signs. We have a or operator with uh, those two pipes and we will have a negate like a not operator. So you can negate or say not to a Boolean expression. In this case, it's just true. So this is this is what we need to keep in mind is the syntax. And I believe that's that's the example that is trying to provide here. Um, I did tell you that we will we would uh, debug, right? So I know this is just a, a, a simple example. It will be more meaningful into the other examples, but just if for those that is following the video and I want to try it on as well. So what you can do is on the visual code, 
you just click here on this debug and all you need to do is just press F5 on your keyboard. So when you press F5, it knows um, the file that is um, executing. So you just do here, run a debug, launch is already running. No. Oh, I was just taking some time. Okay. Um, so here we go. So as we go through, you can um, step into or step outside. So we're going to step over. So you step over here and you see the output immediately below as a go lang. You keep stepping over and you see another out output. So one plus one uh, equals two. And you keep doing that and you keep seeing the value on the output. Very simple, uh, but it's better for us. Oh, I'm actually going to the Golang itself. We don't want to go there right now. It's uh, too high level. Let's just stop and close the proc.go. It's just for us to understand how the debugging works on Visual, uh, VS Code. Very simple, just F5 debug and um, use the keywords uh, when you can and you're you're good to go let's take a look on the next example so the next example would be variables so far we have seen how values are pre-assigned and how you can you know manipulate those values and print them but we did not save those values in a, in a memory in other words in a variable so this will be the next example so we go here on the left side, on the left side, we look for a variables folder and here we go. There is a variables.go. I'm going to uh, close the other one right here. And um, this time I'm not going to, I'm not going to debug. Um, we're just going to take a look on what it's doing right here. So let's learn it first. So there is the package, the import format, the function main. So the very simple way to declare a variable in Go, the syntax wise, you say var as variable, you say the variable name, you assign with an equal sign, and you specify a value. So in this case right here is a string. So it's a string because it, it has the double quotes um, and then a actual text value. So Go identifies that automatically as a string. This is just one way of declaring a variable. There is other ways. Let's 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 continue. So here there is a var b comma c. So that's a way for you to declare multiple variables at once. And the funny thing is you can actually assign those variables uh, at once as well with a comma separated value. So we'll see how is the actual output and Another way is to infer the type that is being initialized. Well, this is already being done here on the string. And so this is just, um, I guess it's just providing that, you know, being a little bit more explicit because on the previous, uh, the previous way we predefined the, the, the variable type, which is an integer, uh, right here. This one is just a Boolean. Um, you see other things here. So if you declare a variable integer, you do not assign a value. You say, hey, you, uh, initialization are zero value. For example, zero value for an integer is zero. So in this case, we'll likely output a zero because you are not assigning a value at declaration time. And another shorthand for declaring variables on Go, and this, and this, uh, it took a while for for me to get used to it because, um, typically speaking, you you always use the equal sign, but this one is just a shorthand for declaring variables. You do a column here and do an equal sign, and you specify. As you can see, you don't need to specify var at the beginning. I, I guess that's one of the advantages. Um, it's a slightly short shorter the code and you you print uh so let's take a look go here we do cd variables um from the cd variables we say here here we go so go run variables dot go there we go so go run so the first value is initial the second 
value is one space two, which is equivalent for the, the, the value assigned to B and C uh, accordingly as integers. The next one is true, which is the, uh, the value for a letter D here. Going down, it has a declaration here for E. There is no predefined value. We're expecting zero. And the last but not least, just a shorthand for declaring variables. You just specify the syntax and the output is Apple. Um, so we saw three examples so far here on this website. There is many more. We um, are going to be releasing a series of videos explaining all those details for you. And I hope you are liking and enjoying the content um, with this go by examples um, documentation on how to learn going in a very easy way. Personally, I loved it. So if you like the content, please uh, give it give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be releasing more videos uh, following next. Thank you very much. See you next time.